Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Duds and Dragons. We're going to talk about Candela Obscura, and we're going to talk about Critical Role. And we're going to, so, and here, okay, I'll, I'll get right to the point. I supposition to you. Uh, so basically, everybody's like, oh, 2023, OGL Crisis, 2023, Manic Panic, right? People are like, Hasbro, you global corporation with a heart of steel, you're absolutely savage. You've left all these uh, people... Uh, be, you've left all these copy creators out in the dark. Oh my goodness, their ability to copy Dungeons & Dragons is threatened as you try to change the OGL. How dare you, you global corporation, you heartless global corporation with a heart of steel. You're just savage. <laughs> like, you know, okay? So that, that, that to me is, is, is 2023, right? And people are upset with Hasbro. They're like, you heartless, you know, you heart of steel, global corporation, you're just savage, this is terrible, here's my supposition to you, Critical Role is a heart of steel, savage global corporation, right, just like Hasbro, they got their money belt on, they got their monocle fully in place, and Critical Role is coming to say, Hasbro, hold my beer, we could be far more savage Far more heartless, far more heart of steel, far more heartless, far more global than you. Okay, all right? And so let's get into it, all right? Illuminated Worlds is the most heart heartless global corporation move I have ever seen, far worse than anything Hasbro has done, right? So Hasbro came along in 2023 and said, we own the OGL. We've owned it for, you know, since the early 20s. We've owned it for two decades, right? And we're going to change it, right? And I have to admit, I, yeah, a heartless global corporation. I, I'm a capitalist, right? Like, I have no problem with a heartless corp global corporation, right? Like, I'm a capitalist, right? But, but, here, but, but, you know, people were crying out and saying, oh, you know, and we need a hero, right? And they're looking to Critical Role to be this, like, crunchy granola sandal-wearing you know, you know, a uh, Ben and Jerry's of tabletop role playing games, and boy, oh boy, is Critical Role coming out as an absolutely heartless global corporation. So let me let me posit it to you, okay? Here's the issue: Candela Obscura. First of all, I think people care a lot more about Daggerheart. They they did care they did care a lot more about, about Daggerheart, okay? And I think Critical Role made an absolutely massive mistake by not bringing um, Daggerheart out early, right? Because that's the that's the, that's fantasy based. Oh, and you know what? Actually, I think people only care about Daggerheart because they know less about it. A lot of people have been saying this is going to be the D twenty system. Absolutely, that has not been stated in any way that Daggerheart is going to be a D twenty system. Right, and so people people just have so many hopes and expectations. They want anything Critical Role makes to be the the D and D killer, right? Like, and and they really don't care what Critical Role's desires for these games are, what their expectations, what their intentions are. It's all about what the tabletop role playing game community wants, and they want revenge. They want revenge for um. They really, uh, they really. They really want revenge for the 2023 Manic Panic, the OGL crisis, right? Woo! Man. Uh, but So what did they do, right? Well, this is what they did, right? They have made their own Gary Gygax. Critical Role, in my humble opinion, have made their own Gary Gygax. Their own 1987 Gary Gygax. The guy who's out in the cold, right? And is looking in on the window and going, Oh my gosh, I inspired this. I built this. And I'm completely out. Right? Okay. Now, Gary Gygax ended up there in 1987 because of massive hubris. Right? He he said, I'm going to be the CEO. I'm going to be the head. The head I'm going to be the chief executive offer, the officer. And I'm going to be the CCO, the chief creative officer. Right? He wanted to write and lead. And he did not have the ability to do it. And he should have got a real CEO in 1975. Right? It was necessary for him to be the seventh, the the uh, the CEO in 1974, and the reason why was Dave Arneson, right? Dave Arneson was connected, and Dave Arneson was like, "Let me squawk on the phone, D20 
do nothing. You do all the work. You take all the risk. And if it's up to me, Dungeons and Dragons doesn't exist. Dave Arneson was one of the biggest obstacles to Dungeons. If it had been up to Dungeons and Dragons, uh, if it had been up to Dave Arneson, Dungeons and Dragons would have been an idea on a note on a napkin. It would have never happened, right? Gary did all the work. Gary did took all the risk in my own opinion. Okay. Right, and he needed to be the CEO in 1974 because it would have never gotten created without him. Right, he he supplied the raw metal that it took to to drag Dungeons and Dragons into the light. Right, to create it from whole from whole cloth. Right, uh, David Arneson does not deserve one speck of of credit for for Dungeons and Dragons in my own opinion. It's all Gary in, in my own opinion. All right, okay. But in 1987, he had tried. You know, he had went to Hollywood. I think he had picked up some bad habits in Hollywood. He ended up losing his marriage, right? Um, and he ended up re- and losing control of TSR and losing control of Dungeons and Dragons, right? And so he was Moses. He, he went all the way to Canaan, but could not go in. He could not go into the Promised Land, right? And, and the Promised Land was the 90s. When, when, but Gary made sure that Dungeons and Dragons had a champion and a protector. He handpicked Lorraine Williams, and Lorraine Williams injected massive value and created Dungeons and Dragons. And so Gary was like, here's this world breaking idea, right? Uh, here's this, and in my humble opinion said, here's this human flourishment engine, right? And then he's like, you know what? I failed as a CEO. Lorraine, you're going to be a real CEO and put real value in this, in Dungeons and Dragons so it never dies. And that's exactly what, what Lorraine Williams did. She turned this uh, wooden idea that he had into pure diamond, right? Uh, and it will last for centuries based on the work that Lorraine Williams did, right? So who is the Gary Gygax of Candela Obscura and all of, all of, in my opinion, um, Critical Role's current new tabletop role-playing game ideas? It's John Harper. He wrote Blades in the Dark, and Blades in the Dark is Dusk Vault. It is a brilliant, occult Victorian, um, brilliant, 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 occult Victorian um, setting with an absolutely peerless, with two other things, a peerless uh, rules um, rule set, right, outside of Dungeons and Dragons. It's, it, it honestly, I think it's actually the third best tabletop role-playing game design in all of tabletop role-playing games. You have Dungeons and Dragons. Then you have Index Card RPG. Blades in the Dark is number three. Blades in the Dark is the... And, and those are the only podiumed rule systems in the world, right? Blades in the Dark, Forge in the Dark, right? The Forge in the Dark system, right? Blades in the Dark rule set. Um, Blades in the Dark setting. And get this, you cannot leave this behind. A shockingly innovative uh, layout. Right? It has It has a visual layout that actually assists the narrative. It's incredible, right? So Stras Asimovic, who created... Um, so so Critical Role is going to make a new... Uh, not a new tabletop role-playing game, but a new tabletop role-playing game system that you can run anything in the world with, right? Any setting, right? So they pick up the phone. They can call anybody. They can call anybody, right? They can call anybody in the industry. They can call Ingrid Bernal over at, at Index Card RPG. They could have called John Harper. They could have called Taya Sabadina, right? They could have called Ajit George, right? They could have called Kate Welch. They could have called Jennifer Kretschmer, right? Anybody in the industry is going to pick up the phone when, when, frankly, I think they could have called Jeremy Crawford or Chris Perkins, right? Like it said, we're going to do it, man. We're going, we're going for the brass ring. You know, get over here. We're going to build something from real from the ground up. You know what they did? They're like, hey, Strass Asimovic, uh, you ran Blades in the Dark, right? And then you copied it and made Band of Blades. And then you copied it and made Scum and Villainy. Hey, uh, why don't you just, uh, <laughs> like, why don't you change two details and uh, make Blades of the Dark ours and we don't have to pay John Harper? <laughs> like, like, in my humble opinion, that's exactly what they did. It's savage. It is ho- so heartless global court, right? It is heartless global court. And guess what? This ain't their first rodeo. Matthew Mercer is heartless global corp. To the fang and claw, baby. This dude is full on savage, right? Orion, I, I point you to Orion and Cabra. He's there at the first 27 episodes of, he's the Pete Best of Critical Role, right? This dude helped them build 
want to help them build the number one, right, tabletop uh, Dungeons Dragons streaming uh, streaming game in the world, right? And and right now, every single member of Critical Role is making millions off of this. You know, taking taking uh, you know um, taking meetings with Amazon executives, right? Like this is real, right? Like they have shown they have they are the Michael Jordans of uh, Matthew Mercer is a Michael Michael Jordan of Dungeons and Dragons, right? Like he's he's done more with it and literally made millions, millions, right? Not a joke, right? And uh, so you know, and and they could have called anybody, and instead they're like, hey, why don't you just copy Blades in the Dark for us and we'll call it a day, right? Now the reality is everything they did was completely legal, right? And you're like, Scott, it's all legal, no harm, no foul. No, seal your flapping mall, fool. Right? Like, <laughs> no, you don't get to play that. And the reason why is the 2023 OGL crisis, right? The 2023 uh, manic panic, right? Ethics are supposed to be in the middle of this. Everybody called out Hasbro. It was completely legal for Hasbro to do every single thing it did in January. And the whole freaking world melted and got upset because they're like, this is unethical, right? And that's what I'm saying. I don't think what they're doing is illegal in any way but I do think it's unethical, right? Like, the reality is this is outrageous, right? Like, Illuminated Worlds is just a skinned Blades in the Dark. So, so get this. In my humble opinion, Stras Asimovic copies both the visual layout, which is groundbreaking and innovative in tabletop role-playing games, copies the entire rule set, right? Like, actually, not the copies 90% of the rule set, injects 10% change, right? Right? And, and you're like, oh, Scott, I don't think he did it. The dude literally wrote two copies of, of, of Blades in the Dark. Wrote two copies of Blades in the Dark. What do you think they hired him for, right? For his originality? And he's ne- like, come on. Or like, you know, <laughs> right, okay. Uh, and then, right, and, oh, and tell me if I'm wrong, and nothing else. Wrote two copies of Blades, you know, two copies of Blades in the Dark and nothing else, right? Like, no other published works that are like hundreds of pages long. Nothing. Liter- literally nothing, right? And then, um, Talison Jaffe comes in and copies Duskfall, and t- copies the entire occult Victorian setting. Like, there's literally no, this is absolutely savage, right? This is heartless global corp, right? So, it's, it's a shell game, right? Like, people are like, oh, Hasbro, you heartless global corporation. <laughs> Dude, you don't know who you allied with, man. Critical Role is heartless global corporation, to the T, right? This is savage, right? Now, I'm going to say this right now. They're not too far in, right? They got one episode of, uh, of Candela Obscura. It hasn't even hit YouTube yet, right? There's more than enough time to fix this, right? So, uh, Critical Role, you guys, so Critical Role, this is Scott Garibay. I'm talking directly to you. It's not too, tur- it's not too late to turn this bus around, okay? Please reach out to John Harper. Pay him what he's worth, right? And 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 just admit that uh, Candela Obscura was completely inspired, and the heart of your design, visual and rules, come from John Harper. Bring him in officially, right? And just say, hey, we realize, you know, we got excited, we started moving, we used inspiration from this guy, but we're at the beginning of the project, and Stra- and, and just show Strass and John hugging, right? And say, John Harper's on the team. Right? He's not doing anything. He's going to take your call, Matthew Mercer, right? Like, and this is the right thing to do. Okay? So, you know, Matthew, all right, hey, if you want to continue to, you know, if you want to, if you want there to be any chance for people to believe that you are what people think you are, a person with a heart and not just the leader of a, a heartless global corporation, right? Because that's what you seem to present as, right? Then you have the opportunity to do the right thing, bring John Harper in and say, we were inspired. We got a little ahead of ourselves, and maybe there was too much copy energy here. John's in now, and he's going to help us do some real innovation on both Illuminated Worlds and Dagger Heart. And we're going to make sure that there's something uh, that there. And not only are we going to have all the cool things from Blades in the Dark, but we're going to also have um, the the innovation and the and the real spirit, right? And say, we have our own Gary Gygax. We have this brilliant designer, not just some copy energy knockoff guy. Right? Like, in my humble opinion, right? That, that's what Strasnoff's a is, in my opinion, 
right? And I mean, you, you could see it. Like, this thing is blades in the dark to the T. Like, it's just, what's the difference? Gilded dice? Please. Right? Yeah, yeah. It, it's, yeah. And I even think there's elements of, of, of gilded dice already in blades in the dark, right? It's, it's not, there's virtually no difference. It's incredible, right? So, uh, Matthew Mercer, you got a chance to fix this for you and fix this for Critical Role. Please do the right thing. Call call John Harper up. Pay him a real sum. You know, it, I think it should be a quarter million to a million dollars. You guys have enough, right? Even if you need to take out a loan to pay him, right? Do the right thing, right? Put put somebody real at the center of your effort, right? And I think that's the right thing to do. Every single word of that is my humble opinion. What's important is when I get to hear your humble opinion out there, when you get in the comments and send your traffic, please consider like subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.